Anybody going to young uh, young boy tour? His tour? <sighs> yeah, he's he's has a tour coming up. I don't even know if he's been on tour. Like, I ain't gonna lie, young I boy. I think it's big. Young boy, that that dope, man. What can big news are you doing? Suicide, suicide in the building. building. Whoa, I ain't seen that man in a minute. Uh, can I be backstage, or is is he gonna beat me up? No, nah, I seen a uh, three the other day. I think the, he, he, he's a big. Oh, this is NBA Young fan. Boy's first tour ever. Is it ever? I don't know. That's what the. F- Chat said. I don't know if we really need to talk about the fact that he's starting it off in Chicago because the Monday show already discussed it at length. But man, that guy's got some balls on him, huh? That's why I'm I'm not going on the Chicago show. But I feel like it's it's going to be like a historic <laughs> moment in hip hop history in some way. I yeah. feel like we're going to be talking about it. For Everybody going to be talking about that. But that's kind of like what Kodak just did when he went to New York. Do you feel like it's beyond O Block to detonate a bomb? Come will on. Will there be a bomb squad? Man, y'all taking this shit ain't too nothing, far. Ain't, ain't, that's young boy. Ain't, what's going to happen is nothing is going to happen. It's going to be very secure. Security going to be up to yin yang. They already know what time it is. Yeah. They're not going to, they're not, no one's stupid. You know what I mean? But some people are stupid. But how? So, I, well, young boy is not dumb. Do no, you young wanna... boy is not dumb. But is there an O Block soldier or two who are just like, fuck it, I'm going to do some crazy shit? Well, one thing, niggas is afraid of the police. So. You, you put are, police around motherfuckers or in a right of venue, niggas is not going to do I'm that. I'm real though. In Chicago, it doesn't seem like they're that scared of police. Do I want to spend three, four hundred dollars to go fight or shoot up somebody at a show? <laughs> no. no one's suggesting that you need to get involved at all. But... <laughs> 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 oh, you were talking me, about like no, other people, right? Just yeah. in general, I don't want to spend two, three hundred dollars to go argue and, and possibly might not fight somebody. That's got to be the most waste of time. You, you can't do. You, you want to know you how fucked up uh, Flacco is, though? Is that I was talking to Flacco about the fact that I interviewed Bostop. Now, Bostop, for those who don't know, O Block soldier, good friend of King Von, et cetera. He's been mm-hmm. around since like the Chief Keef days and shit like that. It was super cool. We went out there, and, and Flacco's first question about the interview was. Did you ask him how he feels about Quando Rondo getting shot up? And I was like, no, I did not. And he's like, how could you not ask it? That would have been my first question. I'm like, Flacco, that's, if you do want to ask that question, it definitely cannot be your first question. Because that's going to make you look really <laughs> yeah, he going crazy. Straight to, he going straight to the bullshit. If so, you, hey, how you doing? Did you How you feel about the nigga getting shot up? Like, damn. I just got here. If you do want to try to bust that move, you definitely got to take your time. Now, yeah. I don't know. There was something about... The conversation where it's just like we were vibing too good as homies. It was, it was it was a good conversation. I had already pushed a few lines in terms of trying to get him to like acknowledge that drill music is a little too crazy and that it makes sense basically that the cops use it in fucking investigations and shit like that. So at that point, I didn't really want to push it to the limit and ask him about that, especially since that's just, I mean, that's just like that. That's about the messiest question I could think of asking he's like oh so how do you feel about the guy who basically was the reason why your good friend and a guy who was like a hero to your hood how do you feel about the fact that he just got his homie killed it's just like such an invitation for messiness and shitty that's, that's i know you're stuff. fucking not talking you're the messiest motherfucker man i had it written down in my notes as a possibility I just decided I didn't like it. <laughs> you the messiest nigga in here. You're definitely calling on these people to ask those questions, dog. He's You're just as messy. He does has a yeah, you is too. But even he I, does have yeah, a moral yeah. compass though. Because he'll be I like, moments, should so. I do this? He'd be, should I? Some days he'll be like, I'm gonna let it fly. I just didn't wanna. Cause I could almost guarantee what Bob Stop would have said. He would have said it, is it because I ain't talking about that. Is it because you was out there with him and talked to him that you was like, I got a little more respect and don't want to do this shit crazy like that. I think part of it is that a lot of gang beefs or just rapper beefs that when people talk about like, oh, you were talking about this situation or this situation on No Jumper, it's like, in reality, they're just silly ass beefs that in reality, nobody's going to get fucking hurt over. And when you talk about the O Block, Young Boy shit, Quando Rondo, King Von, it's just like such a fucking deadly situation already and there's no reason for us to think that it's not going to get more gnarly. And so it's just, I don't know, given that there's already so much bad shit that's happened as a result of this, and it's kind of surreal to even like think that this is like a real thing in hip hop just because it involves like some of the biggest rappers 
and that literally one of the biggest rappers already got killed over this situation like it's pretty fucking crazy that, so what was know. your reasoning for uh interviewing a young young man from rolling hunnets well, I found out about Tunchi Five from uh, doing the uh, or from the situation with Treyway, and then I went and watched a bunch of his videos, and uh, the music was cool. But I also was just like very fascinated by him, and I wanted to learn about him. He seemed like an interesting guy, so I hit him up. Not so let's do this interview. More gang beef. Mm, if he had said anything that I thought would really add fuel to the fire with the treyway thing i probably would have edited that out if he had really like like that's the one thing that i feel like a lot of people confuse is like him in particular i listen to his music i hear him dissing all kinds of neighborhoods and shit he didn't do any of that in the interview though it's like an unwritten rule so you asked him the question in in the hopes that he articulated himself in a way that you wouldn't have to edit it out but you will still get the content that you wanted for your clip if his response was I don't give a fuck. Every single eh, is a pussy. Fuck them. Rah, rah, rah. We, we, my, my side shot, killed so-and-so. Rah, rah. If he said some crazy shit, then we, I would edit that. But I also, like, I know him. He's a smart kid. He's not, like, now moving you around like him that day. Right, but I, my, <laughs> my, I no, I know him. No, but I interviewed him twice. You know that so did, my, bro. I interviewed him twice. Because the, the first audio did. Because the first one. No, the first audio did. I'm, looking, uh, at the, oh, I'm okay. looking at the other side of the room. Yeah, the yeah. first one, for some reason, did not have any audio, so I got to do it again. Oh, my God. But to be honest, the second one was way better, although, to be honest, also, he showed up drunk. So, I mean, whatever. We should are you, so cash. Should, should you um, interview people while they're drunk since you're so against stuff like that? Hmm. I wasn't getting him drunk. <laughs> I wasn't buying him drinks at the bar like somebody. He didn't have no drinks at the bar. Hmm. I think he's lying because he want to protect you and Wario. No, dude. He didn't have not no drinks. And you why did he ain't no being no bitch? He ain't gotta protect us. But let me ask you, like I said, <laughs> I, you I, had him you would fucking have. carry himself. You were not so sure. So you acknowledge <laughs> that he was drunk and you decided to interview him anyway. Hmm. Adam 22 being wow, a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite and hypocrite. you are a cat. And you had that fuck them the question the questionnaire was just there you go leaning around drama. <laughs> oh my fucking god! That was a good interview. <laughs> now he's gonna go do Cam Capone and all these other fucking interviews, and they can always say Adam Twenty Two did it first. So that was the like objective. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's not as burnt as Crib Mac, but. It's comparable Somebody in the sense that, that I just can... I seen his shit online. I thought he seemed super fucking interesting, so I wanted to talk to Fred him. Fred Mac is one of a kind, and somebody else that's, that has been intoxicated and that you interviewed. Well, hmm. he, that's how he has chosen to live his life. <laughs> 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 that's really one of like the main <laughs> themes, though, when you watch all those different Crip Mac interviews. It's like a different person in every fucking interview because he's like. I mean, I think part of it is just him. Like, he's just on a different level every day. But then also, it's like, how much did he have to drink? Is he smoking weed, et cetera? It's like many Crip Max. That first one, that version never showed up again. Let me ask he you. He was a little different after that. If somebody is fucked up, have you ever, like, stopped? Like, I'm not doing it. So you really don't mm, care. But I don't, I don't, I can't think of a time besides that bunk one where anybody was that fucked up. What about Lil Xan? He was never that bad. Okay. Lil Pump did one that never came out because he was too fucked up. And you didn't put it out? No, I just <laughs> if I put it out, it would have been a joke. Damn. You still, like, you still got it? He could barely talk. Yeah, it was on my laptop, but it's it was it was like I met up with him. I've told the story mad times, but I met up with him and he was like on one. Stoked to do the interview. We didn't get to the interview studio until eight in the morning. At which point he was no longer on one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, eight in the morning damn. too. <laughs> I mean, that's when you got to do Breakfast Club. I was dragging Lena around for these festivities. There back wasn't then, even a couch for her to sit on back there. Damn, you! how rude. She was probably curled up in a ball in the corner. And she still loved your fucking dirty ass. I know. And that's why I can't leave her. Why would you want to? I don't want to. You want to leave Heather? No. You want to leave Lexi lacking? Uh, uh, no, I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Catch me off guard. And you did boot game. Yeah, but that was live. You about to Joe Button me? 
No, I wouldn't do you like that. <laughs> that wouldn't do No, that I like just that. say, if you're going to say don't get nobody fucked up the interview, then stick to what you're supposed to do, too. All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.